What? Yeah, sure. We didn't see that coming. Cheap as China panels. Thing is like maybe two years old and already failing. Completely worthless. I think for this year I haven't had any jobs for this machine and it has been completely forgotten here. Last time I moved it was when I was doing the questionable fix to the under garage. So I haven't really moved it a lot this year. Maybe like 10 meters maximum. Okay, well, I have to do some checkups before I get this thing to work. Also need to make sure that this crap job 6000 will be useful somehow. I mean, if there's new paint on this thing, then that usually means everything is okay. Usually. missed one I think that's pretty much it on the greasing side next up let's check the oils it seems to be a bit overfilled but it is on a slight slope right now so I guess that's fine I mean the oil is definitely better colored than it was when I got the machine when I got the machine the oil was completely gray and I was thinking that maybe the head gasket is uh, leaking, but apparently that was not the case. Yeah, the coolant level is constantly on the same level, which is good, right? I mean, if the coolant is not going anywhere, then uh, there is hopefully no head gasket problems. Got some stuff there. I'm really glad that the fuel tank is full. Probably would need to sell the excavator to fill the whole tank. I mean, it's not even funny anymore. Okay, one more thing left and that's the hydraulic fluid. Oh man. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. What the hell? 
need more power. That felt like nothing. Either I'm weak or... I don't know what that was. Beautifully golden colored. It's like brand new. Okay, so yeah, the roof uh, extension. You know, it's uh, not that bad as it looks. The reason I have it is because the, it's the only way I can actually get this excavator in that workshop. But one thing that is annoying is that I've hit my head against these corners a couple of times last year. So I'm just gonna smooth out the corners. Oh yeah, hitting your head against this is a lot smoother than hitting your head against the pointy end. Okay, I'm pretty much finished with the setup. Let's rock and roll this thing. So guys, this video, it's kind of about the cabin, but not so much. I guess it would be like 33% uh, about the cabin. So this video is all about installing a water line. I mean, if you remember, I should have like a sewage pipe deep below here somewhere. Not really sure where to be honest, but I think it's somewhere here. Anyway, in my part 13 cabin video, when I was installing this um, water line, there was a pipe here and it went under the foundation. So it's supposed to come out from here somewhere. I really hope it's like not under the concrete. That would be a major fail on my part. So, so once I find the pipe, I'm going to start laying the water line. And the trench will go pretty much straight forward down the road. At the end of this video, I'm hoping to have like a temporary valve here. And I have water flowing through it. Another location that I want water to be accessible is this greenhouse here. I think having permanent water supply here is a good idea. And the third location that I want to install a water output is on the corner of the main building. I mean, the job is pretty much straightforward, but I have some issues or problems that I need to overcome. So the first obstacle I will be hitting is somewhere on this location. So there is a very old kind of like a sewage pipe here. It's made out of steel, so it's not really easy to break. And this pipe actually goes quite a ways to the end of the house. Uh, but it's not very deep. I think you can even see it. Yeah, here, here it is. So it's not very deep. Free steel for my upcoming projects. Right here. So as I clear that obstacle, there will be no problems on this area. So on this spot here, there is supposed to be a inactive sewage line. I'm just gonna plow through it, no problem. But a couple of meters ahead, Somewhere here are two lines. So one of them is the power for the sauna uh, down there. And the second one, a bit deeper, is the water line. Also for the uh, sauna there. And I need to dig that water line out because I'm planning to add a junction to it. 
so I can split that pipe into four different pipes. So from this location the water will flow towards the cabin and towards the thing there, green, greenhouse. After this I get to enjoy digging for only like maybe 10 minutes. Because from here I'm gonna have another obstacle. The plumbing output line from the main house. I would really be pissed off if I messed that up. So I have to be extra careful on uh, this location. And just 10 meters ahead I'm gonna have another obstacle. So there is an electricity line that comes from the post and goes under the ground to this uh, barn. Uh, this one. And I think I'm gonna install the motor outlet somewhere here or here. So that's my plan of attack. Hopefully I don't break anything and everything goes smoothly. Now that I think about it, absolutely nothing goes smoothly for me. There is always some type of failure. I wonder what it will be in this video. So I've been actually wanting to do this for two years, but for some reason I always have my hands tied with other projects. Right now though I'm kind of forcing my hand because I really can't continue the cabin project without installing the water line. So my hands are pretty much tied here. Have to do it. By the way this is the first job for this excavator this year and I'm hoping my craps job 6k will do fine. Anyway guys I think I'm gonna time lapse most of the digging unless something catastrophic happens. Like uh, if a boom breaks in half or something like that then obviously I'm gonna try to fix that somehow. But if nothing catastrophic happens, then I guess enjoy the video.
Oh man. Had a bit of a failure here. Crap. Kind of odd looking coupler. Most of them are pressed on like this. But uh, some of them are like this. I mean, I got one more here that is similar. The way this should work is as you put the hose in here and then start tightening it up, it's gonna pretty much force the hose shut in this location. So maybe I can just um, fix it on the spot. Man, I'm not sure I can turn it here. Okay. That's as tight as I can get it. Yeah, it's pretty much at the end. Hopefully it will actually hold. So now, now comes this thing and this uh, is supposed to like go in here. Hmm. I think I need to screw that out a bit, it's too far up. So this this has like reverse threads on it and I'm always confused. There we go. Not really sure how tight they need to be as I've never really seen a hydraulic coupler like this. But if this fix does work then it's great because then that means you can pretty much just fix your hoses on the spot. With the Preston hose you you have to take it to a hydraulic shop. Do we need to stop at some point? I mean it just keeps going. Right to the end maybe. I'm pretty sure this should handle like 100 bar. Considering how tight it's inside there. Okay now it's kind of getting hard. Okay, I'm not gonna overdo it. If it's le if it leaks, I'm gonna tighten it up a bit more. Well, there's uh, maximum pressure on there right now and it seems to be working, so let's get back to work.
Okay, well, pretty much done with the drenching now. Had a bit of a boo-boo here, but uh, nothing too serious. So I'm gonna clear out the drench nicely and uh, then we'll take it from there. Oh yeah, that's fine. I'd rather not fall off myself. <sighs> okay, that was pretty exhausting. But I think I got most of the ditch kind of nicely cleared out. And considering I've only had about four hours of sleep, I think I did okay. I absolutely feel terrific, so maybe I am a robot. Man, this new undergarage that I have is really good. Before, I remember, I had all sorts of weird metal clunking sounds going on when I was driving around. You know, for me it felt like the track was coming off every 10 meters. But after I did the fix to it, the ride felt so smooth. So, so far I'm very happy with this fix. And this uh, thing also broke on me, but Apparently I can fix it on spot, which is great. If it had a breast on end here, I would have needed to take it to the hydraulic shop where they would have made me a new hose. So actually this fitting is pretty good because you can fix it on the spot with simple tools. Digging wise, it took me roughly a day to get this uh, trench finished. At the start I was using the wider bucket but you can see how wide the ditch came. Considering the diameter of this water pipe, this ditch is miles wider than it needs to be. So I decided to use this smaller bucket. I have never used this bucket before. It kind of came with the excavator, so I just threw that thing aside immediately. Actually, I kind of like this bucket. So I might just keep it on my machine for now. There were a couple of spots that kind of surprised me. So let's go check them out quickly before I continue the work. For some reason there is a spot here where there is pure sand. I mean just check this sand out. This is pure like uh, like peach sand or something. Really interesting. It starts from somewhere here and you can see from here it just completely ends and the gravel just continues. Uh, here is the water pipe that goes to the sauna. This is the sauna electric line. Luckily, I did not break it. So on this spot, a completely mysterious pipe came out. And this one. I had no knowledge of this pipe whatsoever. There was a greenhouse next to this building. So I'm pretty sure this is a water pipe that went to that greenhouse. Check it out. Under the ground, the conduct or shield around the electrical cable is completely fine. But above ground, look what the sun has done to this thing. I mean, this thing is just shredded. Sun has completely eaten this shielding up. So I did an extra trench here because we're gonna add an electric line from here to the to the greenhouse as well so there was one spot which was really confusing and still is i don't know if you noticed but i stayed on this spot for a while and the reason is because it was so packed with rocks and boulders i mean so much rock came out of this spot and you can even see that from here it's just pure gravel here bunch of rocks with dirt I mean, it's pretty obvious that at some point someone did a ditch here and for some reason they filled it with rocks and dirt. It's kind of confusing. So yeah, so on this spot I had that little boo-boo where I kind of fell in here slightly. Sadly my camera died without me noticing, so didn't really see how I got out. Basically I just lifted the excavator up with 
the back blade and the boom place those two posts under the tracks and then just draw off nicely into the sunset next up would be to place the pipe in the trench thing here right now i can't really drive around the house or anything so if i can get this part of the drenched backfield then uh, it will help me out a lot first though i'm gonna go around the trench and try to pick up a bunch of these rocks that uh, came out of the ditch uh, and there are a lot of good sized rocks in the ground you can see there are a bunch of rocks everywhere These things will be very useful for me in the next phase of this cabin build. Let's focus on the pipe now. I really wish this pipe was one long pipe but I got this pipe for free and it's in bunch of pieces well at least the pieces are pretty long so yeah free stuff is great but but sometimes there is a catch this time this is the catch at least this piece is exactly the right length I was gonna cut it off from here anyway so I bet the guy who got this was thinking about me. So this piece seems like it's a complete piece. The length I don't know but uh, seems pretty decent. It's a bit different size though. I think it's uh, smaller. Okay, now I'm just gonna put a bit of soft gravel on top of the pipe. After that, I can uh, largely fill in the trenches. Now comes my favorite part. Backfilling these trenches. I can mostly just backfill them, no problem. But there are some locations that I have to leave out for now. 
where connections have to be made. And I don't have all the parts for the connections right now, but I'm really eager to fill back these trenches. So we can actually walk around the house. Right now it's pretty messed up.
freaking rocks. I will absolutely never whine about not having enough rocks ever again. Okay, so I'm gonna try to clear some of these rocks out of here and then I need to figure out how to connect these connections. I think I have like three connections that I need to do or four. So obviously one of them is here, uh, another one is here and the final connection will be made here. The most difficult of the three. Definitely. Uh, mostly because I need a special valve here that if turned it will let the water seep out of the pipe. So that's kind of important because during the winter time the pipe that comes out of the ground can freeze. So I need that special valve. So I actually have installed one of these valves before and uh, it looks something like this. It's sort of like an earth valve and once it's fully turned open it will let the water that is beyond this valve seep into the ground. Basically the valve looks something like this. But I can't use this. This is pretty much scrap metal now. Apparently when the pipe is pressed in here, this will not come out anymore. So this pipe has been cut off too short, sadly. Now for the connections. So my cousin kinda did manage to install this earth valve thing here. He also added this PVC piping around each connection to make sure that the thing does not deteriorate due time.
All right, guys, finally got these things sorted out. I think I had these holes here for about two months. Well, actually my cousin did all the connections and he ordered a bunch of parts for it, but the parts took forever to arrive. Some shipping issues, I assume. But anyway, he did all the connections by himself. He actually knows this stuff a lot better than I do, so that's why I wanted him to do this instead. Got all the proper hoses and fittings, did the connections and later also secured the connections with some PVC piping at the end of the road. Got water at the cabin. The main objective was obviously to get the water to the cabin, but there was also two side objectives. So one of the side objectives was to get a water line near the workshop as well. So decided to add it here. And obviously the larger of the two side objectives was to install a water outlet near the greenhouse. So I've been wanting to add this for a while now. But anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap up this video now. It's gonna take a while for the grass to kinda regain control here. Yeah. But at least I have water now. So that's how I got water here. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.